Namaste dear students welcome back I am here with one more illustration on liquidation of companies unit so I am starting today illustration number 7 as I said in my previous video that I am going to comments question paper problem from this video so from problem 7 problem number 7 that is illustration number 7 I am starting question paper problems so let us look into the problem following is the balance sheet of Mysore Trading Company Limited as on 31st 3 2005 and this question has been asked in the question paper University of Mysore April May 2006 year question paper so he has given a balance sheet liabilities rupees assets rupees so, so i'm going with the liabilities first paid up capital under that six thousand six percent preference shares of rupees 100 each six lakh twelve thousand equity shares of rupees 100 each 12 lakh 18,000 equity shares of rupees 100 each, rupees 50 paid, 9 lakh. Secured loan, mortgage loan on land and buildings, 6 lakh rupees. 8% debentures, 6 lakh rupees. Current liabilities, sundry creditors, 5 lakh 40,000. Income tax, 60,000 rupees. On the asset side, fixed assets is 12 lakh rupees, that is land and buildings 12 lakh rupees, plant and machinery 13 lakh 20 thousand, current assets stock 6 lakh, debtors 6 lakh, cash at bank 1 lakh 80 thousand, profit and loss account 6 lakh rupees. So if you total both the side, you'll get 45 lakh, 45 lakh. So let us look into the adjustment part. The company went into liquidation, voluntary liquidation on 1-4-2005. The preference dividends were in arrears for two years, which is payable on liquidation. See, uh, preference shareholders uh, are supposed to get the dividend, which is outstanding for past two years. Those outstanding dividends has to be given on liquidation. So at the time of winding up, we have to settle that dividend part. The assets realized as follows. Land and buildings, rupees 14,40,000. Plant and machinery, 10,80,000. Stock rupees four lakh twenty thousand, debtors rupees three lakh sixty thousand, and then the expenses on liquidations were rupees forty eight thousand. The liquidator is entitled to a commission at two percent on all assets realized, other than cash at bank. And 3% on amount paid to unsecured creditors other than preferential creditors. All payments were made on 30th September 2005. Prepare liquidators final statement of accounts. So in this adjustment mart, uh, you have understood that that uh, the com uh, went into liquidation. So the preference dividend, it has to be paid uh, like two years dividend we have to pay. Then assets realized. So whatever we are selling the assets, so that is we have to show. And the expenses he has given at the same time liquidators uh, uh, commission also he has given. 2% on all assets realized. See, whether he gives or he don't gives, we don't consider cash at the time of calculating liquidators. 
remuneration clear and 3% on amount paid to unsecured creditors so 3% on unsecured creditors other than preferential creditors he said preferential creditors are also unsecured creditors but they will have a preferential rights so that is why they are called as preferential creditors so other than preferential creditors he said but still we calculate uh, 2% that is 3% on amount paid to unsecured creditors. For that, we might have to do the working note. And preferential creditors, if he has given directly, we take it directly. If not, if he has not given directly, then we have to calculate. Okay. Then all payments were made 30th September. See, uh, actually here the financial year ended at, ended on like 31st 3, 2005 and liquidation had happened 1st April but the settlement made on 30th September so 30th September means you have to count the months so on April 1st it has took place that is liquidation so you have to include April April May June July August September how many months count again April May June July August September because the company went into liquid voluntary liquidation on 1 4 2005 the first statement in the adjustment so on fourth means how many months six months clear because while calculating interest on debentures so we have to calculate six percent for six months additional six months outstanding interest we have to calculate and settle okay so this is the out structural idea so that you can solve the problem by your own so anyways we will solve the solution part now so open your book so let us start the solution part so dear students let us begin the solution part so i'm doing the solution for illustration number seven correct so illustration number seven illustration number seven i'm doing and this question has been asked i said april may 2006 university of mysore question paper april may 2006 question paper okay April May 2006 question paper we are solving so let us give the title liquidators final statement of accounts liquidators final statement of accounts in the books of Mysore Trading Company. So you can write that in the books of Mysore Trading Company. In the books of Mysore Trading Company. So this is the heading. So as you all know that we have to draw a table. So let us draw the table. So I am opening the table for liquidators final statement of accounts as you all know that it is going to be a normal ledger account table okay normal ledger account table so which consists of uh, two columns that is particulars rupees particulars rupees so almost uh, you know complete page uh, we may require to solve the problem sufficiently so i'm making a table for a complete page yes i'm ready with the table so are you all ready with the table yes shall we start the solution yes come back so first give the ending for the columns what are the endings particulars rupees particulars rupees particulars rupees particulars 
rupees okay so first what we have to do yes realization realization of assets realizations of assets okay so under this what are we going to write first always yes secured assets secured assets do we have any secured assets in the problem yes no it is there right he said in the liability side in the question liability side secured loan mortgage loan on buildings rupees 6 lakh he said so that means it, the loan which has been taken against land and building is rupees 6 lakh and in the asset realization in the adjustment he said land and building realized value is 14 lakh 40 thousand 14 lakh 40 thousand okay therefore what we are supposed to do now so we are supposed to write the realized value of secured assets so that is land and building value how much it has been realized for 14 lakh 40 thousand okay land and building minus you know secured loan minus secured loan so that is what they have said right secured loan mortgage loan on land and building correct so minus mortgage loan so how much mortgage loan 6 lakh rupees they said in the problem 6 lakh so realized value of land and building 14 lakh 40 thousand and mortgage value on land and building is 6 lakh so deduct 14 lakh 40 thousand minus 14 lakh 40 thousand minus 6 lakh rupees so how much you got 8 lakh 40 thousand 8 lakh 40 thousand is the difference so i am writing outer column 8 lakh 40 thousand rupees clear so this is how you have to do the calculation for any secured creditors so then we have a b point b that is free assets that is assets which are not secured clear free assets assets which are not secured or assets which is not mortgaged or assets which is not uh, you know given as a uh, collateral for raising loan clear so let us uh, check out which are all the free assets first one we have a plant and machineries so right plant and machinery so how much plant and machinery value is realized value 10 lakh 80 thousand rupees clear 10 lakh 80 thousand 10 lakh 80 thousand rupees then we have stock so stock what is the value of realized value of stock 4 lakh 20 thousand so take 4 lakh 20 thousand rupees so then debtors you have debtors so debtors realized value how much 3 lakh 60 thousand 3 lakh 60 thousand so if you look at on the realized assets only four assets has been realized one is land and building that has been secured i have taken here plant and missionary stock debtors i have taken anything i left we always forgets cash so that is always be added in the free assets column correct so like uh, check out in the last year balance sheet that is in the question cash at the bank how much one lakh eighty thousand rupees is there so write down cash at bank how much one lakh eighty thousand rupees one lakh eighty thousand rupees so now total this and put it to outer column that is ten lakh eighty thousand plus four lakh twenty thousand plus three lakh sixty thousand plus one lakh eighty thousand so put together twenty lakh forty thousand how much twenty lakh 40,000 so this is the assets are realized 
uh, table. So what we are going to calculate in the liquidator's final statement of account on the debit uh, side. So now on the credit side that is payment side we are going to start clear so what we are supposed to write all the time secured creditors the first item we are going to write secured creditors so it is going to be nil why it is going to be nil because this mortgage loan is already cleared here so we have already cleared after clearing whatever they left out amount the remaining amount we have taken that is why secured creditors is always nil so after that immediately what we are going to write yes liquidation expenses correct liquidation expenses liquidation expenses how much he has given in the problem liquidation expenses amount to rupees how much liquidation expenses the expenses on liquidation was rupees 48000 so 48000 rupees is the expenses on liquidation then we have to calculate liquidators remuneration so next item is liquidators remuneration so write by leaving one space one line space liquidators remuneration liquidators remuneration under that point a under that point a on assets realized correct how much he said Liquidator is entitled to a commission on 2% on all assets realized other than cash at the bank. So 2% on assets realized. 2% on assets realized. So what is the amount assets realized? So on all the assets realized he said correct. So, when he says on all the assets realized, so what we are supposed to do? So, we have to consider all the assets. So, how we are going to consider all the assets? All the assets, how we are going to consider? Do you have idea? No? Yes. Let us calculate. I will show you all the assets. So, that is first I am going to take. 14 lakh 40 thousand rupees because land and building is also realized so i am writing 14 lakh 40 thousand which amount it is that is land and building so on the top of it so to get clear to have a clarity i am writing land and building 14 lakh 40 thousand correct so next plus all the other assets other than cash at a bank so all the assets how much 20 lakh 40 thousand which includes cash at bank so we have to calculate without cash at bank so let us calculate 20 lakh 40 thousand minus deduct cash at bank 1 lakh 80 thousand rupees 1 lakh 80 thousand if you deduct how much you will get 18 lakh 60 thousand rupees 18 lakh 60 thousand rupees so this is free assets other than cash this is free assets other than cash that means i have calculated all this that comes to 20 lakh 40 thousand since we should not include cash in this amount so 20 lakh 40 thousand minus 1 lakh 80 so 18 lakh 60 thousand rupees we have got as a free assets so now add this to 18 lakh 60 thousand plus 14 lakh 40 thousand 18 lakh 60 plus 14 lakh 40 so total we are going to get 33 lakh how much 33 lakh so that is equals 33 lakh on this what is the percentage 2 percent so 2 divided by 100 so 33 lakh into 2 divided by 100 that comes to 66,000 
liquidators remuneration 2% on all assets realized is 66,000. So next is point B. That is what they said. 3% on unsecured creditors. So 3% on unsecured creditors. 3% on unsecured creditors. So how much is the unsecured creditors? Do we know? No? Yes, no. So we have to do a working note for calculating unsecured creditors correct so let us do the working note so i'm writing working note number one under that calculation calculation of unsecured creditors calculation of unsecured creditors okay so first what we have to do total creditors correct total creditors given in the balance sheet so take down total creditors given in the balance sheet given in the balance sheet how much they have given in the problem so they have given five lakh forty thousand correct in the liability side checkouts and creditors five lakh forty thousand okay so do we have any uh, creditors which has been like uh, secured no right so less secured creditors so there is no any secured creditors they have given in the problem correct see they have given secured loan but the, there is no any secured creditors correct so there is no any secured creditor so there is no secured creditors deduct so whatever the balance comes five lakh forty thousand since secured creditors is nil so then less preferential creditors less preferential creditors see in the problem to make you a bit confusion what they said the expenses on liquidation was 48,000. The liquidator is entitled to a commission on 2% on all assets realized other than cash at bank and are 3% on amount paid to unsecured creditors other than preferential creditors. They said other than preferential creditors. So here there is no any secured creditors has been given in this problem there is no any secured creditors has been given so you have to understand that okay but we consider preferential creditors as a uh, income tax as a preferential creditors but it is not included in the sundry creditors so it is not there at all so i am going to show it as a nil so the rest whatever we have that is called unsecured creditors so there is no change in the value of unsecured creditors so unsecured creditors remains same unsecured creditors is five lakh forty thousand rupees okay so unsecured creditors value we got so much five lakh forty thousand rupees so now i'm calculating five lakh forty thousand if you want according to working note one according to working note number one so five lakh forty thousand into three divided by one hundred five lakh forty thousand 
into 3 percent. So how much? 16,200. 16,200. So here, we, I, as I said, we don't have any preferential creditors, correct? But income tax is always considered as preferential creditors. So you should remember this. You should remember this. That is preferential creditors is always sorry income tax is always known as preferential creditors so it is treated as preferential creditors so that is why so we have to calculate three percent remuneration on preferential creditors as well clear so preferential creditors other than he said so that is why we are not calculating in other case we have to consider clear so preference uh, preferential creditors so since uh, income tax is there so that has to be considered as a preferential creditor so uh, what we'll do is we'll make a note so that you don't get confusion okay so i'm writing the note over here so i just saw that uh, i income tax in the liability side of the balance sheet sheet okay so it is a note to the students so whenever wherever you know any tax any tax in the problem any tax in the problem is to be treated is to be treated as preferential creditors preferential 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 creditors understood so since here unsecured creditors three percent we should calculate but other than preferential creditors they said in the problem so that is why we are not considering preferential creditors amount so i am calculating this liquid as remuneration i am totaling it 66000 plus 16200 66000 plus 16200 is comes to 82200 rupees how much 82200 so this is we are done with the liquid as remuneration so we are done with so after that to whom are we supposed to give a payment to whom next we are supposed to do the payment so we are supposed to do the payment if you look at the liability side of the question so we have a debentures so eight percent debentures we have so let us settle the debentures now so now i'm settling debentures so what is the amount given in the liability side for debentures in the balance sheet so debentures eight percent debenture we should not forget to write that percentage eight percent debentures six lakh rupees correct six lakh rupees so is there any outstanding interest on debenture if they have given in the problem no right so there is no any outstanding interest clear there is no any outstanding interest but but what is that but is all about we are settling the payment on which date look at the adjustment all the payments were made 30th september 2005 that means the liquidation took place on 1st april but we are making a settlement on 30th September so there is a gap of six months so this six months interest has to be paid clear so outstanding interest on debenture outstanding interest on debenture how you will get six lakh into what is the percentage of debenture eight percent debenture so eight divided by 100 into how many months six divided by 12 understood 
so since it is a 8% so that means the rate of interest is 8% and how many months 6 months why because the settlement made on 30th September so now calculate 6 lakh into 8% into 6 divided by 12 so that comes to 24,000 24,000 so now let us settle the debenture that is 6 lakh 24,000 rupees 6 lakh 24,000 so we have settled the debentures so next we have to settle unsecured creditors so let us unsecured creditors let us settle unsecured creditors so directly write working note one so we have already calculated in working note number one so that is unsecured creditors is five lakh forty thousand so i'm going to settle entire amount so that is five lakh forty thousand rupees five lakh forty thousand is settled so after unsecured creditors we have to settle preferential creditors correct so we have to settle preferential creditors so let us settle preferential creditors so how much preferential creditors is so as i said who are called as preferential creditors any tax in the problem is to be treated as preferential creditors so in the problem look at the liability side of the problem uh, so in the balance sheet so they said income tax rupees 60,000 income tax rupees how much 60,000 so let us settle that 60,000 so I have settled preferential creditors also that is income tax so after all this we have to settle preference shareholders correct 6006 percent preference shares of rupees 100 each 6 lakh rupees so 6 percent preference shares holders Okay, so what is the capital we are supposed to settle them? Preference shareholders, 6 lakh rupees, correct? 6,006% preference shares of rupees, 100 each. So that is 6 lakh rupees. So 6 lakh, why I am writing internal column? Do you have any idea? Yes, in the problem they clearly said... The company went into voluntary liquidation on 1-4-2005. The preference dividend were arrears for two years. For past two years, they have not received their arrears. That means dividends. So that has to be cleared at the time of liquidation. So that means we have to clear their dividend for two years. Clear. How do we clear, clear it? So take the capital amount, 6 lakh. What is the rate of dividend? 6%. So that is 6 divided by 100. Where is the 6? 6% 6 preference shares. Clear. For how many years? 2 years. So now calculate 6 lakh into 6% into 2 years. So that is 72,000. How much? 72,000. So total this and... Put it to outer column six lakh seventy two thousand. Six lakh seventy two thousand. So now the time to check out whether we have surplus cash or deficit cash. Okay. So let us check the side of a debit side. So how much the cash we have? Eight lakh forty thousand plus twenty lakh. 40,000 8 lakh 40,000 plus 20 lakh 40,000 so how much we have we have 28 lakh 80,000 correct how much 20 simply I'm writing in a pencil 28 lakh 80,000 rupees we have 28 lakh 80,000 rupees clear 
so in the payment side to whom all we have settled let us check one by one and calculate 48,000 I have paid to the liquidation expenses then 82,200 rupees for liquidators remuneration then 624,000 for debenture holders I have paid then unsecured creditors I have paid 540,000 then 60,000 I have paid for preferential creditors that is income tax then 6,72,000 for preference shareholders so total I have paid 20 lakh 26,200 correct so I have expensed 20 lakh 26,200 so how much I am left with the cash because total we have paid how much 20 lakh 26,200 so what is the difference now 28 lakh 80,000 28 lakh 80,000 minus 20 lakh 26,200 minus 26 lakh sorry 20 lakh 26,200 if you do that how much the difference you are going to get 8 lakh 53,800 so that a difference I am writing 8 lakh 53,800 rupees so we have a cash with us 8 lakh 53,800 so now this has to be distributed among equity shareholders this money has to be distributed among equity shareholders so here we have the equity uh, shareholders in uh, different uh, scales so see if you look at the problem see there is a 12,000 equity shareholders of rupees 100 each so have paid completely and at the same time 18,000 equity shares of rupees 100 each rupees 50 paid so there is one category who have paid complete 100 rupees and another category who have paid only 50 rupees so that is uh, uh, 18,000 equity shares so now we cannot uh, distribute this 8,53,800 equally among them so for this we have to do a working note clear so that working note will give us the exact figure how much amount to be distributed on what kind of equity shareholders so let us do the working note for the uh, equity shareholders part okay so now we are done with the working note number one so i'm beginning with working note number two working note number working note number two okay so what are we calculating here calculation calculation of the amount of the amount to be brought in or paid to the equity share holders equity shareholders okay so now let us calculate for that we should know total paid up equity share capital total paid up equity share capital so how much we have total paid up equity share capital for this go to the question and check in the balance sheet so 12 lakh equity shares of rupees 100 each what is the amount 12 lakh rupees so how much 12 lakh rupees so take the calculator and enter 12 lakh so 12 lakh rupees I have entered you to take the calculator and enter 12 lakh rupees plus 18,000 equity shares of rupees 100 each rupees 50 paid how much the amount column 9 lakh rupees so 12 lakh plus 9 lakh so how much you are going to get 21 lakh rupees so 
total paid up equity capital how much how much the shareholders have paid 21 lakh 21 lakh rupees so for your better understanding so in the balance sheet liability side is there so that is what i have taken uh, 12 lakh rupees 12 lakh rupees plus 9 lakh rupees correct plus 9 lakh rupees so that is equals to 21 lakh rupees 21 lakh rupees okay so we got this 21 lakh less cash available after paying preference shareholders less cash available cash available after paying preference shareholders after paying preference share holders so how much we have uh, the amount after paying preference shareholders so we have how much 8 lakh 53800 rupees so, so how the amount the balance which we got here 8 lakh 53000 800 rupees clear 8 lakh 53 800 so that is i am going to deduct so 21 lakh minus minus 8 lakh 53000 800 rupees 8 lakh 53800 rupees so now deduct how much you will get 21 lakh minus 8 lakh 53000 800 so the balance is 1 lakh 24000 sorry 12 lakh 46200 12 lakh 46200 since this is lesser than this total paid up capital is 21 lakh but cash available to distribute among equity shareholders is 8 lakh 53800 so then this is going to be a loss clear so this is going to be a loss so right loss to be borne loss to be borne by equity shareholders loss to be borne born by equity share holders so you should write this so that we will have a clarity so now we have to identify loss per share clear so that is working note number three working note number three calculation of loss per share calculation of loss per share so how much loss is there for that we have to uh, calculate through a formula so formula is loss per share equals total loss total loss divided by number of shares total loss divided by number of shares so that is equals total losses 12 lakh 46200 12 lakh 46200 divided by number of shares how much see in the balance sheet question in the balance sheet 12,000 equity shares and 18,000 equity shares. So now equity shares. So that is 12,000 equity shares of rupees 100 paid and 18,000 equity shares of rupees 100 paid rupees 50. So 12,000 plus 18,000 number of shares we are writing here. So that is 12,000 plus 18,000. How much? 30,000 shares. So now divide 12,46,200 divided by 30,000. So how much you got? 41 rupees 54 paise. 41 rupees 54 paise is the loss per share. So we got the loss per share 41 rupees 54 
paise correct so now so we have to check amount to be received by 12000 equity shareholders and amount to be received by 18000 equity shares so, so why we are paying them because both of them have paid more than 41 rupees 54 paise because 12000 shareholders have paid complete 100 rupees correct getting my point 12,000 shareholders have cleared complete amount. If you check in the balance sheet of the liability side, 12,000 equity shares of rupees 100 each. So 12,000 into 100, 12 lakh rupees. They have cleared all the 12 lakh. Then 18,000 shares of rupees 100 each. So they have paid 50. So 18,000 into 50, 9 lakh rupees. They have paid 9 lakh. So per share they have paid 50. These people have paid 100. With both the case is greater than 41 rupees 54 paise. Both the case they are greater than 41 rupees 54 paise. So obviously we are going to distribute the excess profit. So we are going to distribute the excess profit so now I am writing number 4 working note number 4 okay so working note number 4 so in this we are going to calculate amount to be received by 12,000 equity shares the amount to be received or distributed received by 12,000 equity share holders equity share holders okay so now what is the face value paid by the equity shareholders 100 rupees what is the loss 41 rupees 54 paise minus 41 rupees 54 paise so if you do that how much you are going to get the difference is 58 rupees 46 paise clear 58 rupees 46 paise this is amount paid by the shareholder face value of the share paid by the shareholder loss that has to be deducted so remaining amount 58 rupees 46 paise so now calculate number of uh, sorry you know amount distributable among equity shareholders 58 rupees 46 paise into number of shares 12,000 number of shares 12,000 so calculate it is 58.46 into 12,000 so how much you got 7,1520 7 lakh 1,000 520 7 lakh 1520 clear so this is we are done with the case a that is for 12,000 equity shares now amount to be received by how many shares 18,000 equity share holders equity share holders equity shareholders same what is the amount paid by the shareholders rupees 50 be clear 18,000 shareholders of rupees 100 each but paid up 50 rupees so how much they have paid we are going to consider that 50 rupees so what is the loss per share 41.54 41.54 so that is equals how much so that is 50 minus 41.54 so the left is 8 rupees 46 paise 8 rupees 46 paise so now 8 rupees 46 paise into how many shares 18,000 shares into 18,000. So, how much calculate 8 rupees 46 paise into 18,000 shares? So, 1,52,280. How much? 
280 rupees should be distributed among 18,000 equity shareholders. 1,520 rupees should be distributed among 12,000 equity shareholders. So let us distribute in the liquidators final statement of account. So I am leaving one line space and giving a heading as equity share holders equity share holders so underline that under that 18 12000 shareholders at rupees 58 rupees 46 paise 58 rupees 46 paise how much you are going to get 7 lakh 1520 and this 18000 equity shareholders are getting at rupees 8 rupees 46 paise if you calculate you will get 1 lakh 52,280 rupees so, so now total both so that is 7 lakh 1520 plus 1 lakh 52,280 so put together 8 lakh 53,800 8 lakh 53,000 800 so we got the same amount how much we had a difference so i'm clearing that which i have written in a pencil so now if you total both the side how much you are going to get 28 lakh 80 thousand 28 lakh 80 thousand clear so how much you are getting 28 lakh 80 thousand 28 lakh 80 thousand rupees so both the side total tallied so we are done with this liquidation problem see this is one of the liquidation problem which has been asked in the question paper of university of mysore so you will get an idea what kind of questions they will ask in your examination okay so this is one of the simple problem not much complication so i have done with the liquidators final statement solution for illustration number seven so if you have any doubts so reach me out over a phone or through whatsapp or through call so don't hesitate to clarify your notes uh, your doubts otherwise you know you cannot uh, solve the problem so these are all the working notes so, so which you are supposed to uh, you know do at the time of solving the liquidators final statement okay so we are done with the problem and it got tally 28 lakh 80 thousand 28 lakh 80 thousand i'll come back soon with one more video until then take care bye bye and see you soon and as usual stay safe bye